Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I've posted a video on my YouTube channel page that, in my opinion, is the blueprint on how to beat Yoshihiro Karmagai, right? And it's a fight against, to me, a vastly underrated fighter, the first man to beat Paul Spadafora, and that's Johan Perez. You need to remember that name. By the way, his next fight is going to be against Mauricio Herrera in early July, right? But what you'll see is Karmagai is a all-action fighter. He's right in front of you. In many ways, he reminds me of heavyweight Derek Chisora. You don't have to look around the ring to find him. He's not really dealing in the subtleties of the sport. If you look him up, you'll see that most of his fights end by knockout. He's very front foot heavy. He's trying to bring it, right? But he also doesn't read angles. As I said, he's very much like Derek Chisora. He gets hit. There's a lack of precision. Now, speaking of precision, let's talk about the blueprint on how to beat the ghost. Robert Guerrero, I believe that blueprint is in the Floyd Mayweather tape. Right now, understand, Floyd Mayweather has been taking a tour through the welterweight and junior middleweight divisions. We have a tendency in looking at a Mayweather fight in which Mayweather takes over the fight, dominates the fight, wins the fight by several rounds. You look at the CompuBox numbers, you see that Mayweather has landed typically 50% or more of his power shots, and then there's a tendency to think that his opponent is overrated. Far from it. If you look at the Mayweather Guerrero tape, you're going to see that two things separate the two fighters. Right? One is foot speed. Mayweather is able to do his work and then walk away from Robert Guerrero. Right? Mayweather can get on his back foot and can move when he wants. There's no foot speed issue in the Carmagay versus Guerrero fight. Right? Because Carmagay is not using the ring like Floyd Mayweather. He's going to be right in front of Robert Guerrero. Right? He's not going to be using angles. So, throw the foot speed issue of the Guerrero-Mayweather fight off the table. Let me also say, too, that there is a second factor to me that separated Mayweather from Guerrero, right? And that's Mayweather's ability. Don't sell it short. In leading with power shots in that particular fight, it was Mayweather's ability to surgically time and land a straight lead right hand. Right? Understand, Mayweather, like Carmagay, is right-handed. His right hand is his power shot. Right? He also has a great left hook up front. But understand, many fighters, just to get a rhythm, need to touch you with a jab or need to bounce before they throw their power shot. With Floyd Mayweather, he was able to get it off without a tell time and time again on Robert Guerrero. The pattern of that fight was that the two men would face each other. Mayweather would pop Guerrero with a straight lead right hand and then would move away. Carmagay doesn't have that level of of precision. He just doesn't. 
right? Let me talk about another fight, another fighter who I think is underrated. And that's Orlando Salido, right? This fight's one of my favorite fights. It's Orlando Salido using volume to beat Robert Guerrero, right? Now, if you believe Carmagee has a chance in this fight, you're going to be interested in the Orlando Salido fight. But understand, Salido, like Mayweather, to me is more advanced than Carmagee. Salido is defensively different. You'll notice Carmagee is all or nothing. In other words, when the bullets start flying, he has his hands up like this. Right? He has them on his cheeks or rabbit ears, whatever you want to call them. He has his hands up like this. Right? And he stops throwing punches. He just kind of has his hands up and he watches you. Occasionally, he'll try to move his upper body a little bit. That's very different than, to me, the more advanced Orlando Salido. I believe it's more advanced to be able to be defensive while throwing punches. Because Salido is an angles guy, you'll notice fights where the other guy's throwing punches and Salido is still punching himself. But what he's doing is he's taking the sting out of the punch by rolling with it, making the punch hit a shoulder. Or making the punch hit him, if the punch is coming this way, making the punch hit him after much of the sting of the punch, much of the leverage of the punch, has already been dissipated. Right? And then, of course, Salido, the guys who roll and who continue to throw punches... They see the game differently than someone like Carmagee, who just stops fighting, tries to get in close while you're throwing punches. Understand, you can control the volume of a guy like Carmagee, because you'll know if you're pumping a jab, there's a chance he might just stop throwing punches. Right? You can't do that against Orlando Salido. Because you're throwing a jab, and he's backing away from the jab, but he's leaning, and he's trying to get under the jab. I expect Robert Guerrero to win this fight. I believe Carmagee only has a puncher's chance. I think Guerrero, who's much better than advertised, is going to find a fighter right in front of him. I believe what Guerrero needs to do, and keep in mind, Guerrero's a southpaw, is he needs to make it even harder for Carmagee, who seems to me to be blind to angles, to deal with the angles, right? He needs to keep a little cushion between himself and Carmagee, just like Johan Perez did. Then he needs to exploit the fact that Carmagee looks open to uppercuts. The fact that Carmagee isn't great defensively and is always going to be right in front of him. Right? He needs to step on the gas. He needs to make this the kind of shootout that he made his fight against Andre Berto. Or, if you want to go further back, his fight against Selkuk Aiden. Let me point out, too, there's another film online, and it's disturbing. It's the draw on Carmagee's record. It's Carmagee against a young guy named Jorge Silva. Now, what you're going to see in that fight is Silva hurts Carmagee a few times in the fight. Silva's landing an uppercut. You'll notice Perez is landing an uppercut. Carmagee, because he's tall and because he has rabbit ears doesn't have protection underneath, right? Also, let me point out that Silva has been knocked out multiple times. Not knocked down. I'm saying knocked out multiple times by less than elite opposition since getting a draw with Carmagee. Right? These two men haven't fought remotely the same level of competition. Guerrero has fought Mayweather, has fought Salido, has fought Joel Casamayor, right? has fought Selkuk Aiden, has fought Andre Berto. 
Carmagee, by contrast, has it. The best person on Carmagee's resume is Johan Perez, and he lost that fight. So I'm expecting an all-action fight, right? I mean all-action, right? This is going to be a barn burner, right? I believe Guerrero wins the fight. At the current odds, that's not good enough to really make a profit. So the hedge I'm recommending is really not a hedge, and you need to be aware of the risk here. I like Guerrero to win the fight with a kicker of Guerrero by KO. In other words, if Guerrero wins the KO, gets the KO, you get the better odds than just Guerrero to win, right? You get Guerrero by KO and you also win on the Guerrero simply to win part of the fight, right? So you get double the pleasure. But understand the risk involved. If Carmagee upsets the ghost, and keep in mind the ghost has not fought for a year. Keep in mind too, an argument can be made he got hit too much by both Aiden and Berto. Right? If Carmagee upsets the ghost, you lose it all. I like Robert Guerrero to win this fight, hedged with Guerrero to win it by KO, right? We'll call it a kicker because it's on the same side of the play as Guerrero to win the fight. I'm expecting all action. I'm expecting punches to be landed. Carmagee, very little experience going into the later rounds, right? I have seen on his record that he's gone eight rounds. Folks, this is a 12-round fight. I'm expecting a stoppage, but... I'll backstop the play with Guerrero simply to win. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. By the way, to the boxing hardcore, let me say, take a look at the Johan Perez versus Carmagee fight. That's a masterpiece fight. Perez looks great, is throwing combinations, right, is not at all phased when he is up with his back against the ropes with Carmagee right in front of him trying to land big shots. That's how the sport is done. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.